Hi friends, welcome to First Edis YouTube channel. This is 106th video, 106th video in Azure Data Factory playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about managed VNet IR in Azure Data Factory. So what is managed virtual network IR? How it actually works? This is what we are going to discuss about in this video. So firstly, uh, Whenever we create IR, we know that if you have seen my data factory playlist, you know that we can create two types of IR, Azure type IR and also you can create self-hosted IR, right? So in the Azure type IR, if you enable the virtual network, then that is called managed virtual network IR. So what this managed virtual network will do, let's try to read this documentation definition first and I will explain you this with more details. So when you create a Azure IR, with virtual network enabled then that IR is provisioned with managed virtual network and this IR what you create with a managed virtual network is going to use private endpoints to securely connect with your data stores okay so and this integration runtime uh, within this managed virtual network ensures the data integration process is isolated and secure so basically what we are trying to say here is if I explain this when you create this managed virtual network right so let me open a MS paint here and let me explain that uh, the definition in simple words okay so let's assume uh, so we know that we have the Azure IaaS right so if you create a Azure integration runtime with virtual network enabled so I will show you that where it is practically so if you create a IR with virtual network enabled, then what it will happen, this integration runtime will be getting one virtual network behind the scenes, okay? So this entire integration network will get a virtual network and within that virtual network only, this IR will be there and whenever you connect using this IR to any storage. So if you remember or if you have seen all my classes, you know that linked services are the one which are like a connection strings to connect to any storage. So let's assume if you want to connect to a storage account, which is Gen2 type, okay? So when you are connecting to a storage account type of Gen2 using linked service, whenever you create a linked service, you select IR there, right? So why we will select IR inside the linked service? Because IR is the one which will actually does the data transformation or data movement, okay? So IR is like a hand of the data factory, imagine that way. So that hand is going to transform the data, right? So now if this IR is there within the virtual network, then the entire data transformation will happen within that network only, okay? So since the data transformation is happening within the virtual network, so it's a secured way of data transformation, okay? So using managed vnet ir if you do any data transformation then that da sorry data transfer or data movement then that data movement is a secured one okay so it's a secured data movement because that data movement will not happen via publicly accessible internet to explain you this better there is a uh, image which i took from the documentation let me explain you this you see, you have a data factory here and inside this data factory, let's assume you created a Azure integration runtime, which is managed IR type. So if you create that, you see data factory behind the scenes will create one managed virtual network. We are not creating any virtual network. We are not creating any sub networks and NSGs, network security groups. All these are networking related uh, stuff if you don't know, okay? So we are not creating anything. We just enable it. Uh, and we will show you that practically so once you enable it automatically service will create a virtual network behind the scenes which is managed by azure platform itself we are not creating it we are not managing it azure platform will automatically take care of this network step that is the reason we will call it like a managed virtual network so in that network ir will be created and this integration runtime will use as something called private links so these are like a private endpoints, okay? So we can call it like a private endpoints. Using this private endpoint, this IRs will try to uh, connect to your storage accounts, okay? And try to perform the data transformation, okay? Sorry, data transfers. So these storages, which contains these private endpoints, 
will not be accessible via the secured so indirectly via public internet we are not doing the data transfer we are using a private endpoint using that we are doing the data transformation since your entire data transformation is happening within the virtual network using the private endpoints it's a secured way of data transformation so that's what we are trying to say in this slide okay and as i said private endpoints are the one which will get created within the managed virtual network and that will actually establish the connections with azure resources for example storage account so in short in single line if i say managed vnet irs or managed virtual network irs will help you to perform the data transfer between the storages very secured and isolated way okay and you no need to so to do any data transformation secure you should have a virtual networks and in this case we are not creating the virtual networks we are not creating the sub networks we are not creating the routing tables and everything right everything is automatically get created by azure platform behind the scenes so there is no headache of ourselves knowing the virtual network and how to create it managing it nothing so everything azure will take care and we, our employees no need to have the deep knowledge on this networking concepts because the entire networking stuff now we are telling to azure data factory service itself to take care of it so let me practically show you how to create this managed virtual network ir and how to use it so for that let me go to browser this is my azure portal and here i have a data factory called adf mahir sample you see this is adf mahir sample is my data factory in this data factory when i go to manage and when i go to integration run times here i can see auto resolve integration run time which is azure type so let me create a new integration run time select this option azure comma self hosted continue select this azure option continue so here one thing we have to make sure is where you the region in which your data factory created the same region you should select it here so if i go back to my azure portal and if i go to my data factory this adf mahir sample you can see my data factory created in east us here right so i should create this uh, ir in the east us region only then only this virtual network option which will help us to enable the managed virtual network uh, will get actively work actually so it's a limitation at this point of time we should make sure our integration run time is in the same region where our data factory is there so once you enable this virtual network configuration for the ir if you expand this you need to select this copy compute scale because this integration run time comes with three components one is interactive authoring this is for uh, connecting to the storage copy compute this is for copying the data so if this option is there interactive authoring then ir can perform the data connection i mean text connections and data previews via linked services but if you want to perform the data transfers you have to make sure this component of the ir should be selected and any other activities in your pipeline if you are running then you should make sure this also so basically select this virtual network enabled and enable this copy under the advanced options so now once i hit this create button it is going to create a integration run time which is azure type but you see the sub type is managed virtual network type that means this integration run time was created in one of the virtual network which is a private network isolated from the public uh, public access and this virtual network we haven't created data factory automatically creates it and manages it so this is a step one so once you create this integration run time the step two is uh, we wanted to access one storage account and perform the data transformation via this virtual managed network using this managed ir so to do that we should create a private endpoint for that particular resource first if you see this diagram you see this ir actually uses the private endpoints uh, with your storage accounts to perform the data transformation so we should create a private endpoint for that storage first to do that under management menu go to managed private endpoints click this new button 
and I want to create a private endpoint for a Gen2 storage. So select that Gen2 storage type connector and here select my subscription and this is where I have to select the uh, storage account to which I want to make the private connection using the private endpoint. So here I will select this ADLS Gen2 sample Mahir. So I have a storage account with this name. So let me hit this create button to create this managed private endpoint. So when this storage account, this private endpoint is getting created for my storage account, let's go to my Azure portal and here let me go to resource groups under sample RG. This is where I have that storage account ADLS sample Mahir storage account. So if I go inside this storage account, if I navigate to containers, I can see a sample container. Inside of that, I have a folder called the data. So here I have employees1.csv file. This file maybe I want to copy to the output folder. So that is the requirement. And this entire copy should happen via managed virtual network integration runtime because the data transfer which I wanted to do, it should be in the virtual network. It should not be public uh, endpoint so that it is like a secured mechanism. So that's the reason I created a IR already. And we created a private endpoint here all. And now when once this private endpoint gets provisioned, I should go and approve the request. So this private endpoint I created for my storage account, right? So on that storage account, I should approve this private endpoint to have the secured connection. So let's go to my storage account. Let's go to my storage account here. And if I scroll down under networking, I should see an option called private endpoint connection. And here you see this is my private endpoint which I created to have that secured connection via that virtual network. So approve this request. So once you approve this request, from now on the private links, the private endpoints are available to do the connectivity between the ADF and the storage via virtual network. So this request is approved here. I can refresh and make sure that. And if I go back to my data factory, if I refresh, so I should see the approval status here as well. So it is still uh, showing it here as a pending, but in one, two minutes it will come up. So meanwhile, let's try to create a linked service for this storage account because linked service is the way through which we will make the connections, right? So click this new button and I wanted to create a linked service with for the Gen2 storage. Continue. So let me select my integration runtime, which is managed virtual network type here. And here let's select my uh, storage account. So my storage account is ADLS Gen2 sample Mahir. So now uh, once this private endpoint is available here, we can perform the test connection to make sure the connection works good or not. So let me refresh this and make sure if we are so we are yet to get this private endpoint here. Let's wait for one minute. Okay, it seems my private endpoint is now available. So I can perform the test connection to make sure whether I am able to connect to my storage account via managed virtual network because virtual management network IR only I selected here. So via that managed virtual network only the connection will happen. So let's wait for the test connection to be successful. And once the linked service gets created, we are see it is successful. So let me hit create. So now I am going to perform a copy activity to make sense. It is able to copy the data successfully. So let's go to author menu. Let's create a new pipeline and let's use a copy activity here. And under source settings, let me try to create a new data set for that Gen2. Okay. So I'm selecting a Gen2 storage connector, binary format, and let me select my linked service, which has this IR with a managed virtual network. Let me browse for that employee1.csv file. Under sample container, in data folder, we have that employee1.csv file. So let's wait for this to appear. Yeah, so employees1.csv. So this is a source data set using which I am connecting to employees1.csv file. So if I go to sync, let me try to create a new linked service. Uh, sorry, new data set for the sync location, which is output folder, right? So let me select binary format and select the linked service 
and browse for the output folder maybe so under sample container I wanted to point to till output folder so let me click OK here so we are pointing to the output folder only not any file so that's where my file has to be copied so now let me hit this execute button to execute this pipeline and select this use activity runtime that means the runtime the IR what we selected in a integration runtime let's use that that's what we said and here one key point to notice when we execute the copy activity usually immediately activity execution will start uh, maybe it will be in a queue state for six sevens or eight seconds and immediately the actual copy activity will perform the stuff what it has to do but in this case right since it's a managed IR it will wait for some time here it will be in under queued status for minimum one minute to two minutes and then only the copy activity will happen and if you see this copy activity execution successful now but when you click this details option and if you see here the copy activity was in queue status for one minute plus 11 seconds almost why because because it has to get that IR first into the virtual network and then execute it so getting that compute into IR will take some time that is the reason it will take this much of queue time and then once the IR is came into the virtual network immediately the data transformation will happen that is the reason within three seconds the data transfer has happened here successfully okay so if i execute the copy activity in different data factory right i executed it with uh, normal ir right there is no uh, virtual managed virtual network ir so in this case when you see the details here see there is a queue time of only six seconds so with a regular ir there is only queue time of six seconds but with managed virtual network ir the queue time was one minute here you can see it right it is for one minute the reason is here there is no need of getting the ir into virtual network it's all public but here there is a need of getting the compute or ir into the virtual network that is the reason it took this much of queue time and then it executed this particular task i hope you got it uh, how the managed virtual network irs will work thank you for listening session please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications whenever i add videos thank you so much